Hello guys, happy Sunday. Wow, 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 wow. It's so awesome to see you guys again. It's been a while, right? Yeah. We thank God for life, actually. We thank God for life. It's a new day and it's a blessed day for me. I don't know about you. You better say what you want your day to be for you. It's a good day. It's an awesome day. It's a blessed day for all of us in Jesus' name. Okay. Uh, like I say always, it's a Always a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and give praises to His holy name. And coincidentally, that is even our topic for today. We're learning something about that today. Okay, so in that same vein of thanksgiving, let us thank God for bringing us to another day and for preserving our lives all through the week. And this is a new week. Would you want to do that right now? All right, close your eyes. Let's pray to God right now. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for another beautiful Sunday. Thank you for a great day you have made. And we rejoice and we are glad in it. Thank you for another new week. We thank you for how last week went. It was by your mercies that we were not consumed. And it's still by your mercies that we are not consumed because your compassion, your compassions, they fail not. Thank you, Father, for your mercies. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we ask you, O oh God, to come and dwell in our midst today as we give thanks to you. May, you. may our thanksgiving be acceptable in your sight and may your blessings come down on us in the name of Jesus. As we learn from you today, open our minds, O oh God. Open our hearts to receive your word with great anticipation. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. And amen. Okay, it's time to give God some praise. I want you to spend quality time praising God, singing praises to his name. Don't forget, the Lord um, delights in the praises of his people. Come on, guys. Let's go thank him and praise him. Hello, guys. It's another beautiful day to give thanks unto the Lord. Are you ready to give God some praise? I want to hear you shout hallelujah. I'm making you, you make 
make me move Jesus, every breath I breathe I'm taking you Every move I make Every move I make I'm making you You make me move Jesus, every breath I take I breathe in you Every move I make Every move I make I'm making you You make me move Jesus, every breath I take I breathe in you Every step I take Every step I take I'm taking you on my way, Jesus, everywhere I think I'm breathing you.
God was shielded from whatever is happening out there in the world. Come on. Say, you've got the whole world in your hand. You've got the whole Wow, welcome back. I hope you danced and praised the Lord. Wow, it's a good thing to give thanks to Him. It's a very, very good thing to give thanks to Him because He delights in the praises of His people. Like I always say, you can't give Him food. You can't give Him... Um, you, 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 you can, well, we give offering, but that is not what you, you can give to God to quantify praises. Nothing can take praises. Because God, it praises is just like the food you can give to God. Normally we eat rice and those stuffs. But God, what he eats, <laughs> per se, is praises. So, always cultivate the habit of praises. All right, um, since the month of August, we've been talking about the word of God, right? Okay, yes. And uh, this is the last Sunday of this uh, Word of God series, and uh, in the first week in August, we talked about what is God's Word, and uh, uh, we went on to talk about the word, the words we speak, yes, uh, the word we speak, part two, and then we talked about hearing and doing God's Word, and then went on to talk about how to hear God's Word and how God speaks to us, yes, and uh, we, we talked about what God word says about prayer and uh, what God's word says about healing and what God's word says about friends and relationship. That was what we talked about last week, right? Okay, and today's a wrap-up. We are talking about what God's word says about praise and thanksgiving. What God's word says about praise and thanksgiving. Okay. Now, we have two key words there, praise, thanksgiving, okay? Praise, thanksgiving. And these are not um, new words, I guess. They are, they are very uh, common words we've been hearing um, from time to time, okay? Uh, the first one, praise. Praise. What comes to your mind when, you, when they talk about praise? What comes to your mind, really? Okay, praise has to do with thanking. God for who he is, okay? For instance, I, I can come now and start saying, oh God, you are beautiful, you are excellent, you are magnificent, there is none like you, there is none to be compared to you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. What am I doing? I'm praising God for who he is to me, okay? Now, uh, it's quite uh, a drift from the other one, which is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving has to do with thanking God, as the name implies, thanksgiving, thanking God for what he has done. Okay? When someone does something for you, what are you expected to say? Wow, thank you. I really appreciate you. Yes, that's the same thing. You thank God what he has done for you. And when you thank somebody for what he has done, definitely the person wants to do more when he has the chance to do. God, when you thank God for what he has done, of course God does more for you. Okay, so praise, thanksgiving, praise, thanking God for who he is. Okay, thanksgiving, thanking God for what he has done. All right, we are going to be looking at a very interesting Bible character today by name Jeho Shephat. Yeah, Jeho Shephat. And uh, his story could be found in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 20. Yeah, verse, from verse 1, I think, to 30. 
That's the whole story, the whole story of the king Jehoshaphat. Now, in this time, Jehoshaphat, he was the king of Judah. Judah was the other part of Israel. You know, after King Solomon's son, I mean, after King Solomon, the uh, kingdom of Israel was divided. Okay? Okay? So the kingdom of Israel was divided because of the way uh, his son, King Solomon's son, which Rehoboam, he, he didn't actually uh, um, lead the people well, so the, the kingdom actually was divided. We now had Israel, and then we had Judah. So now, Judah is a fragment, like the other part of Israel. King Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. Now, in his reign, so many other countries, like three other countries, the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Munites, they came to war with the um, children of Judah. Can you imagine that? Three countries. Imagine our present day. Let's say a country as big as China, America, and let's say Great Britain, coming to war a country like, should I say Nigeria? Okay, it won't happen, right? Okay. But let's just imagine that scenario. How, how would you feel? <laughs> like three big countries like that coming together to fight against a small country. Wow. King Jehoshaphat. It's here in the Bible. A large army. Uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 2. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a large army is coming against you from Edom. They are coming from the other side of the Dead Sea. They are already in Hazazon, Tamar. Hazazon is also called En Gidi. Okay? Jehoshaphat was afraid. Can you, can you see that? Verse 3 says, Jehoshaphat was afraid. So he decided to ask the Lord what to do. That was the best part. When you are afraid, don't just stay on your own. You have to talk to somebody. And the person that is always ready to hear and listen to you is God. That's why we say the best friend to have is Jesus. <laughs> because he, he, he has a listening ears. I mean, he has listening ears. He is always ready to listen to you. So that was what Jehoshaphat did. He went ahead to tell God. And they started praying. They started praying. They started praying. Then God says something. God's word came. Okay, so the Lord says something. The word of the Lord came in verse 15. And he said, listen to me, King Jehoshaphat. Listen, all you people living in Judah and Jerusalem. The Lord says this to you. Don't be afraid or discouraged because of this large army. The battle is not your own. The battle is not your battle. It is God's battle. You see how uh, fulfilling the word of God is. The word of God came and then it just brought easiness to um, um, the whole situation. It brought ease to the whole situation. You can imagine that. And then the, the uh, King Jehoshaphat took courage. He took courage, and then he told the people. He was able to talk to the people this time. He said, listen to me, all you people. Believe in the Lord, and you will be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. You see, courage has come. Courage has come. Guess what they did? <laughs> this one, God did not tell them to do this, because God, God's word just came and said, this battle is not yours, but it's mine. God, God actually told them, to do something. <laughs> God told them to, I mean, yes, God told them not to be discouraged, okay? Then they should believe in him. King Jehoshaphat, guess what he told them? He said, we are going to sing praises to God. All the uh, Levites, you know the Levites, they are uh, uh, people that lead praises back then, okay? He arranged all of them and said, all you people will be doing right now is to be singing praises, singing praises to the Most High God. 
That's absurd, right? <laughs> to me, it's strange. You know, we have three armies, I mean, three countries coming to war against another country. And then someone is saying, let's sing praises to God. It's just like in your class. You, you're, you're, you're failing a course. I mean, you're failing a subject. Maybe it's math. And then uh, after all you, you, you've tried to do, nothing is going, coming through. Instead of someone to say, practice more, practice more, like they always say, practice more. They are saying, go and praise God. Just go and praise God. You can imagine that that's, that was the case there. And then they started praising God. They started praising God. They started praising God. Guess what happened? Those nations that were coming to fight against them, they started fighting against themselves until they were all dead. Ah! <laughs> all of them, they died. They, they started fighting against them. You don't understand. They started fighting against themselves until none of them was standing alive. That was what happened. That's what praise can do. So God walked in the midst of the praises and then he walked, he walked wonders to give them victory in that battle. They didn't have to throw any uh, uh, sword or, or, or shoot any arrow. They didn't have to do any, anything. Nobody was injured. They all went there and then they, they, they saw dead bodies all around. All they did, they shouted, joy, uh, I mean, a shout of victory, of course, and they took the spoils. The spoils are always things that they get from um, the people they win. When they fight, they take the property of the people that have been defeated. That was what they did. My dear friends, I challenge you today. That thing that is giving you difficulty, it may be mathematics, like I said just now, it may be other things, it may be other issues. It may be uh, the fact that your parents have not been able to provide some things for you. They may be giving you issues right now. And you, you, you are kind of discouraged. You are, you, you are kind of perplexed. You are, you are kind of anxious. Why don't you praise God? The book of Philippians says, be anxious for nothing, or in everything give thanks. You, you understand? Give thanks to him. At times when I feel down, most times actually when I feel down, all, all, all that, that I just do is to give thanks. And then I feel myself revived again. Let me tell you, it's not easy. It's not easy. When you're going through some tough situations, it's not easy to just start giving thanks. Because you, you, it's something you would say, what are you thanking God for? What are you thanking God for? But bear this in mind. There is always something to be th thankful for. There is always something to thank God for. The fact that you are living is enough reason to thank God. The fact that you are alive is enough reason to thank God. I was at the hospital the other day, and I saw lots of people that couldn't even raise their hands. They couldn't do like this. They couldn't eat. But there you are. You can eat. You can talk. It's enough reason to thank God. There is always a reason to thank God. You may not have uh, the provision for now, but you have something that has already been provi provided for. You can thank God for that. Start with that. I challenge you today to give yourself, um, um, uh, to prioritize thanksgiving in your daily lives. Like, always thank God in every situation you find yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Even right now, we can we can, we can thank God for some moment. I just want you right now to close your eyes. Think of those things that God has done. Think of those things that he, 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 he did for you in the past. And think of the person God is to you. Why don't you just praise him? Thank him. Say some things to him. Father, you are worthy. Thank you for who you are to me. Thank you. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my teachers. Thank you. Even if you don't have anything to thank God for, thank God for Uncle Israel. <laughs> thank God for yourself. Thank God. Thank him. Thank him. Lord, we appreciate you. Be exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless your holy name. We give you all the glory. Take all the adoration. Lord, we know, oh God, that we've learned something today. And we take this as a challenge to always thank you, to always give praises to you. Your word says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. 
You said we should come into your court with praise and enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Lord, we come into your courts with praise right now. We thank you for who you are to us. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this new week, O oh God. You have brought us into this week and we know that you will sail us through. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. So, our memory verse is, uh, is the same, yeah? Still taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11. And it says, it is the same with my word. With my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. That is the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. It's been an awesome privilege bringing the word of God to you. And I hope you've learned something today. Whatever you're going through, always have it in the back of your mind that praises work wonders. Until I come your way next time, be good. God bless you. Bye. The word of God is full of power, never changing, never failing. The word of God is sure and true, a guiding light through the darkness. It does what it says, it's spirit and life, it endures forever. Changing, never failing. The word of God is sure and true, a guiding light through the darkness. It does what it says, it's spirit and light, it endures forever. We can count on it as a sure foundation. There is power, power. Does what he says, it's spirit and life, it endures forever. We can count on it as a sure foundation. There is power, power, power in the word of God. There is healing. Foundation. We can count on it as a sure foundation.